Okay, hello and welcome everyone. I'm Jason Gumpert from msdynamicsworld.com. And today's event is all about uh, document automation in Serum 2016. Uh, we had a great response for this topic, and I'm really happy to uh, to be able to introduce Dave Carr and uh, Tony Ciccoletti from uh, Trover uh, Business Solutions today to present. Uh, Dave has written about this topic, and uh, again, it got a lot of interest, and it's great to have uh, both Dave and Tony on the line today. Uh, as we get started, please know that uh, you can add your feedback and ask questions using the Q&A block you'll see on the right side of the webcast session window here. Our presenters uh, uh, will be making time for questions uh, throughout the event, so, so really do enter your questions anytime. We also have a couple of poll questions we wanted to uh, just put out there now just to get a sense of um, you know, the interests of you in the audience and, and just learn a little bit more about where you're coming from. We're going to leave that up for just a minute here as we get as we get going. You should see that to the right now as well. And, uh, yeah, as we get uh, started, um, I'm going to start things off by introducing uh, Tony from Trover. Tony, are you there? Yep, I'm here, Jason. Thank you. Ah, okay, great. Um, so, first of all, I'm Tony Ciccoletti. I'm the CEO of Travari Business Solutions. Uh, we're going to, so we've done a little bit of the introductions. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about our practice for just about a minute. And we'll really focus uh, the bulk of today around uh, the document automation with Word templates, which Dave will be walking everybody through. And then we'll wrap up with uh, how we could potentially help you as well as answer any questions you may have um, that we didn't answer during the presentation. You go to the next slide. Uh, so a few things about us. We're a Microsoft reseller. We're focused on the small and medium business market, which is typically around 400 employees or less. Uh, revenue size isn't really as relevant as the number of employees. Um, we do have clients so that are larger um, and, very, and, and a lot smaller as well. Um, some of the things that differentiate us a little bit is we do provide an agile implementation approach, um, which allows for a rapid and streamlined deployment. So you get high quality deployment at a cost that makes a lot of sense. Uh, we have a, a focus and some IP around some, some particular uh, verticals. So we have some things around software, especially around partner management and high tech, manufacturing and distribution, um, medical instruments and devices, um, as well as um, distribution tech companies. Um, we also uh, can handle um, things like marketing automation, portals for dynamic CRM, and we use some of the common integration tools for um, integrating with other systems as well. Uh, this is just a little bit about how to get a hold of us. I'm not going to walk through this, but we do a consulting group does come out of both South of Sacramento and the Reno area. We have clients up through the, the pretty much up and down the West Coast, as well as um, uh, consultants out of Portland and Utah. Okay, next slide. Okay, and Dave, I'm going to turn this over to you to start talking about what our um, what we did, the, at the top you see the blog, Dave will walk us through what, um, what we've come up with and what we talked about in the blog, and, and you give you guys a walkthrough of the actual solution. Thanks, Dave. Dave, you want to take it from here? Yeah, I'm sorry, I was on mute. All right, can you hear me now? We can. Yes, we can hear you. Thanks. Okay, as Tony mentioned, uh, I've been researching some of the new features of 2016, and one of the more interesting ones is this uh, Word template feature. Um, I did write a blog. You can see uh, that's on there, and I believe that you can ask Jason for a copy of these slides after the presentation. I think he's going to post them on his website so you guys can get that link. Uh, and read the uh, the blog. Basically, I'm going to do kind of a reverse of the order I do in that blog. The when you first uh, uh, load this up, there's some uh, things you have to do to Word to make it work, and uh, those are fairly boring. So I'm going to hold those to the end uh, because uh, I don't want to lose anybody. So I want to show all the fun stuff first. So I'm going to show some examples of the templates that are already out there. Show you a couple I built, and then we'll get into actually building them. And then uh, at the very end, if you want to take a look at the uh, the tweaks you have. We'll take a look at those. 
Uh, but again, that's all inside of that, that blog doc, uh, document. So the, 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 great, the great new feature of this is we can create uh, these Word templates on any entity. It doesn't have to be a contact lead or account or, or, or the off, uh, one of the uh, out-of-the-box entities. It can be any custom entity, any entity in the system. And it, they made it really easy to pick data from entities related to the entity. So if you know uh, about Microsoft the CRM, the main thing you need to know is the one to many, one to many relationships that exist and how those, how those entities interact with each other. And the, uh, the interface shows you that very, very clearly. And you can pick fields from any of the, of the entities, the, the one that your base entity that you're doing the document on, contacts or a custom entity, and then anything that's related to that, you can grab any field values from any of those entities into your document. Now, if they're from a, uh, uh, an end-to-one -one relationship, if it's a lookup, then you just add that, you can just add that field value in there. If you have a one-to-many relationship, like quote-to-quote -quote detail or opportunity-to-opportunity -opportunity product or account-to-contact, then you can create a repeating table in that Word doc. So, for example, you can have the quote header information as fields, and then you can have a, a, a table showing you the, the products on that quote or the details on that quote. And we'll show you how to publish a Word template, uh, uh, basically to use it, how to run it, and basically um, it, it creates a Word document. So at the, at the end of the day, you can do anything with that Word document that you can do with any Word document, including uh, sending it to your customers via email. And there's a capability called uh, a Workflow uh, that allows you to create and actually to uh, basically place a template onto the notes record for a uh, contact or, or any given record that you have a template on top, and I'll show you that as well. All right, so with no further ado, we will get to the demonstration. And again, if you have any questions, I'm going along. I'm okay with stopping and answering them as we go. Um, so feel free to add them in there. I'm now going to share my screen. And you should be able to see my CRM dashboard. We do. Great. Uh, Jason, do we have any information on, on what, the, what versions people are typically using? I want to make sure people aren't completely baffled by this new beautiful version here we have here. Oh, yeah. So um, uh, let's see. Uh, I'd say the majority were um, probably the, the most votes CRM on-premise 2015 or later. Um, and second, close second place was CRM online. Okay. All right, so it depends if they have uh, spring release or not, if they have this new interface, but uh, you, you'll catch on really quickly. So here is the areas in CRM, and then when you select an area, you can see any of the entities associated uh, with that uh, and it, with that area. I also added a custom entity that we'll take a look at to show you how you can create the documents against the custom entity. So I wanted to first go into uh, basically if you uh, there's there's two ways you can create a template, either as a system admin or as a user. Uh, the system admin first has to select, uh, has to create a template in that entity in order for you to create one as a user. So the system admin has to start by going into settings, templates, document templates. Uh, the ones you see here that are modified by system, they come out of the box with CRM online. Um, as you can see, I added, uh, I added some stuff in here. And if you notice, there's Excel templates and Word templates. And they're very different, but they share kind of this common area in CRM. And they also, when you create a new one, it basically gives you a choice of creating an, creating an Excel or Word uh, document. And then I think we'll have time at the end. I can show you uh, quickly how, how really cool the Excel piece is. Basically, you pick an, an entity and a view, and it brings all that data into CRM for you, into Excel for you from CRM. Pretty nice. All right, so uh, as I've shown, uh, so, so basically you can see that uh, the account summary, accounts and contacts, those are two, uh, those are two I have available on the, on the account form. I built out a contact profile we'll take a look at. Uh, campaign case and invoice are fairly benign and not too exciting, so we'll skip those, but, uh, and then we'll show you some opportunity stuff as well. All right, so any questions about the admin? So basically, you create a new template as an admin, you would hit new, and we'll come back and do that once I show you what these uh, documents look like. So go into my sales accounts, and I'll just, the, again, this is all, so again, I built a 30-day trial out a couple days ago. Didn't really do much to the system, uh, out of, you know, this is out-of-the-box data. I added some, some fields and some records in here so these, these uh, forms look good. But uh, so basically, when you're inside of a of a of a record, you'll find the Word templates menu uh, on typically on the ellipsis menu. By the way, if you don't see that here, that means there are no Word templates active for that entity. 
So as I mentioned, you, you as a user can create these templates yourself. In fact, just click here. It says create word templates. That's how you do that. But you need to have uh, your, your system admin uh, activate at least one template for that entity as an admin before you'll be able to see that. Let's just take a quick look at the account summary document. Again, just to, to create this as a user, it's very simple. You just go ahead and say, run the Word template, do it, and it's finished downloading. I can either open it or say, you know, open it on the fold, open the folder where it's stored. And this is a, this is a document. Again, this is completely out of the box. Uh, if I had a picture there, it would show up here. Uh, picture and text to what we can add in here right now. So you can see we've got some fields from the from the account entity here. We've got the primary contact, and then you can see we have. Uh, a, basically a grid here, a view of other contacts. So this is the one-to-many section here of this, and, and also we just see the enable editing here so we can see a little bit better. If you see here now this recent opportunities box, kind of nice, you know, some basic information about the opportunity. And again, this is your one-to-many uh, repeating information, and there are no cases linked. No, there are cases linked to this uh, account, right? And you can see your status of problem solved or in progress. So this is kind of a nice little uh, summary here for the for the account. And again, this is out of the box. I didn't do anything but but open up a, a nice 30-day trial in, in uh, CRM Online. That's that one. Uh, I wanted to head back and do one more on the the one I created on the account for you. It was accounts and contacts, and this is just a simple example of how to generate a, a simple uh, mailing list or a contact the list here. So I've got the profile. And then I have the contacts of this account. And you can see I've done a little highlighting and things just and, and bolding and italics just to show you it's Word. It's a Word doc we're building, so we can use any of the Word features to build tables and highlight them in different colors and all that kind of good stuff. So again, relatively simple to, to see. But again, if you're if you've got a bunch of accounts and you want to go out on the road and you want just a quick list of all of them, then you, then it's very simple to create this report. And then of course again, it's a Word doc, so I can go ahead and print this or email it or whatever I want to do. All right. Any questions on the, on what we just saw now on the um, existing documents out of the account? And we have a question: Do uh, both Word and Excel templates work with on-premise CRM? Yes. Everything I'm showing you works both with on-premise and online. All right. Great. Yes. That's it for now. All right. Well, let's go take a look at the primary contact here and and their record. I've got a, a couple of. Um, Ones up there too, and I've added some activities and things in here, so we have a good uh, a good amount of data on this record to see on these reports. So, no further ado, I'll just go pick the contact profile one that uh, that I built to show a bunch of different things related to the contact. So, one of the things you notice is that the uh, there's a bunch of different relationships you can pick, and it's sometimes different to figure out which one you should pick. And I'll show you kind of a technique to use to, to get by that. But uh, and again, this is turned on a terribly pretty one. I actually built this out this way and said I could either fix it up. Or we could actually do that on the call. As you can see here, I've got the you know the headings are in different formats and colors and things, but we still have the some data coming through here. Obviously, we need to get better columns to show here to get real good information. But just to show you, I can bring in a contact profile information. I can bring in data from anything the contacts linked to. All right. Um, Next thing I want to do is show you the, the custom uh, entity I built. Uh, I just built out uh, this morning, actually, I built out the pro uh, custom property entity. And uh, given everything in the news today, I couldn't couldn't resist but putting Trump's Tower out there, and I gave Hillary a hotel in New York. So we've got a couple of custom properties, and I wanted to show now how we can create uh, a, a Word doc from this entity. And I'm, I'm going to do it as the system admin. So I'm going to go back to my top document templates view. And hit new. All right. So here's the here's the creation of the document. As I mentioned, it first asks you whether you want to create an Excel or Word template. And again, for Excel, I could go ahead and pick any entity in the system. For example, property uh, um, property. Oh, I call it custom property. So it wouldn't conflict with the other one. Custom property. And then active custom properties is the view. I might, might just really do this really quick and show some shows shows well. So let's just do that again doing the word, but I'll quickly show you Excel. And again, here we are, the view with all the data, bam, just like that. So couldn't be any easier to generate a Excel-based uh, document. You just pick the entity and the view. 
And of course, you can create any view you want. So theoretically, we can get any data we want out of Excel in about three clicks. Really nice. Word templates. You have the one choice, and that's to pick an entity. This is the main entity that we're working with. So I'm going to pick my custom property one. And once you hit select entity here, you'll see it brings back all the relationships from this entity to any others. And again, I didn't do anything fancy here. I created uh, an entity that has activities. So this is the one-to-many relationship pane. This shows me all of the entities that account, the account has a one-to-many relationship. So each account has many activities, notes, appointments, okay, phone calls. So these are all the activities that I that I brought in. So these are all the, uh, we have a custom entity called custom properties. We can attach all these uh, entities uh, to a document and create, we can create a table of, of activities or of appointments or phone calls that were done in relation to our custom property. I don't have any data there, uh, and I'll show you the one to many in, in, in a bit. Actually, we'll do both here. I'm going to pick accounts and contacts, and I'll pick, um, I'll pick phone call. Just add that out, even though we don't have one. All right. Uh, as you notice, there's nothing in the many to many relationships. Oh, I didn't really explain the, the many to one. You, you guys probably know this already, but this is these are basically lookups on the property form. So out of the box, it creates these created buys and modified buys, uh, and a team a team link. Uh, but then I created two relationships: one back to the account, so I can get the uh, the property management company, and one to the contact, so I can get the property manager. All right, so it is critical that before you click this download template, you have all the entities you want in the document. Because if you don't, you have to start over again. No way to come back in here and add uh, once you've created this, this custom template. So I think I have what I want. I'm going to hit download template, and then it quickly downloads, and I can open it. I need to enable editing. And one of the things, again, I mentioned there's some setup you have to do. One of the, one of the pieces of setup is to create, is to add this develop menu to your, uh, to your um, menu. Uh, and, and it has this XML mapping pane thing in here you have to click. And when you do that, you have to pick this little uh, URN, Microsoft.CRM document template stuff. And you can see it references our entity. And when I do that, it then gives me my new custom property all the fields on that property, and again, these are all the fields that are created just out of the box. I added an address, city, state, zip, and uh, we have the name. And, I, and then, if you notice, the property manager is a lookup. So you've got the property manager, that's the GUID that's associated with it, and that's the name of the, of the lookup. So that's what we will want to bring back uh, in our report. In fact, I'll just start doing that right now. Typically, I like to start off by putting some labels in here, so I'll say property name, and actually, one of, let me just show you one of the hints I learned is, is a, a good way to format this is to go ahead and start with a, with a, with a table. So I'm just going to do a two-column, two five-row table here where I can put in things about the property. It makes it look nice and formatted. So I'll do property name, uh, address, city, if I can type, city, state, zip, and I'll add two more. I have two more lines here for the property management company. I really wish I could type. And the property manager. Okay, so these are just my labels. Um, one, one hint, don't make the label the same thing as, as these names, or you won't get the label, you'll get the data. Uh, did that once or twice. So now, now we want to add, so basically let me add one, hit, one heading line here. Say this is the field name, this is the field value. Go ahead and make it pretty. And now, uh, now I'm going to put the, 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 val the field values all in this section here. So you're going to have your cursor in that empty box. You have to go find the field you want. In this case, it's property name, which is new name. And again, one thing I will say, I think it would be a nice enhancement for version 2. It would be nice if these were the display names and not the technical names because I know you're probably saying, I don't know the names of those fields. And basically that's why system admins, have, or a good, good thing to do is have system admins start things off so they can start building these templates for you. But anyway, so I want to build this name here. I have to select it. I have to right-click it. 
click the insert control thing and click in plain text. You see there's a bunch of other options here. In this version, uh, the plain text and the picture are the only ones that are supported. So everything is going to go in as a plain text here. But when I do that, you can see it puts the name, the technical name of the field in, and then this little symbol here that means that is a XML component uh, of this document. It basically means that's the field value. So I'm going to go ahead and do this as quickly as I can here. Right click, left click, left click, new, new line, click, click, click. Not too bad to build. And Jason, while I'm doing this, I'll ask if you have any questions for me. Yeah, there's a question, a couple of questions that come in. So um, can you build out a folder hierarchy to organize, uh, to put documents in to organize them? Can you build out a folder hierarchy? Well, these are Word docs. You can store them anywhere you want. Uh, there's a workflow mechanism that will store it on that record as an, as an, a note attachment. So I suppose if you had an account and contact and opportunities, you wanted to store documents in each level, you can do that. You can have a workflow that fires those documents in, into those entities. Uh, but this, this is not SharePoint or any kind of a folder structure. I mean, this is basically CRM and Word. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, another question, do you need to add all of the developer things when uh, using Excel instead of Word? No. Yeah, the developer stuff menu item thing is just for the Word to get you this XML mapping pane so you can see the field names you can drag over. Excel, you just pick the, you just pick the entity and the view and hit go and it sucks in all the data off of that view into your Excel spreadsheet without anything else. That's why I didn't give uh, a really short demo. Right. Another question here. In this, in this version of CRM or this version of Word, are the other options besides plain text and picture not supported? Yeah, uh, I don't know um, the, the, the details behind when they plan to support it. I, I just know that on their official blog and all the blogs I've seen, those are the only two uh, types of data supported right now. Okay. And right. one other question. After, ge after generating a Word document, can it be emailed or attached into CRM easily? Yes. Like I said, it's a Word document, so you know you can you can attach that as an email. Um, the, the, the there's not so it's not really like the mail merge. So you, you don't run these documents against a bunch of people. Uh, you could do that with workflow, but again, it's not going to send it anywhere. It's just going to attach it in CRM. So the, so you can use this to generate basically one offs. Uh, but it, it, it's not, uh, you can, again, and you can run it against us, you know, do it one off in a workflow, um, but it's not designed to send out emails with this, with this document uh, information on it. All right. Let me um, just okay. give this a heading. Let me give this a property. Okay. Property info. All right, so I have all my uh, uh, fields here. I just want to mention again this uh, the, for the lookups. I'm bringing back the name property here, so we get the text and not a really ugly good. The only thing I want to do is show you the repeating stuff. Uh, for repeating stuff, you must enter, you must insert a two-column table. Uh, it's really the only way that this works. And I'm going to go ahead and put. Uh, now I'm going to show you at the bottom of this. You can see these little arrows here. These are things uh, from the uh, from the related entities. And there was one other thing I wanted to show you, so I'm glad I, I did this. Uh, this new custom property phone calls, these are, this is the phone call entity, the activity entity that will show us information about a phone call. So I'm going to just grab and see, uh, we can do about from, uh, we do from, to, and subject. From, to, subject. Um, and again, um, if I if I say from, that's the actual name of that field. So we don't want to do that. And I'm especially not going to copy the stuff I, I, I pull. I could pull in these things and copy them, but that will again cost me to get the values and not the text. So I have phone call from. Phone call to. So this is the same process that we just uh, just saw for adding individual fields, just inserts controls. But again, you have to get 
into the, into each block separately, uh, or you'll get an error. In fact, I'll just do that to show you. If I go ahead, if I'm still in this field, and I go ahead and try to get subject in there, you'll get this error message. All right, so whenever you see that, it just means you're not, your cursor isn't in the right spot to add a new field. So just go here to the subject. I'll add, insert a content control for subjects. All right, so this is repeating now. To make this repeating so we get more than one of these rows, you have to select that row and go up to the top of the uh, entity list where that arrow shows you the entity, right click, insert content control, and hit repeating. Now watch down here, and by the subject, you'll see a, a, a plus sign show up. All right, that's my indication that this is now a repeating group. Okay, so I like to kind of highlight this as I showed you before, kind of make this a little bit, a little bit nicer, highlight some things there, uh, maybe, maybe highlight this in a, in a different, different color. So we see our, can we separate our, oh, that's not what I want to do, in the background. Uh, so we can see, you um, uh, can see the information from data, from headings a little bit better. Uh, let's do that here too, just to make it consistent. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to show you was we had these lookup fields we brought in from the account and contact. So I can go ahead and pull back any of these fields on here. Uh, so let's just pull back. I don't know what I might have up there. Maybe an address one. Do an address one street one. Address one city. Sure. Insert copy control plain text. Okay, now see I just added here, but I don't have any kind of a note here to say what this is. So I'll just say account address and when I look at this field again, it still has that little symbol, so I know I'm good. It's got the box around it, so that will come in as address one city. And just, just to give you the idea, I'll do that same thing from contact. And again, this is pretty easy to bring, bring data in from, from basically these are the, uh, the parents of this record. Uh, so I'll just bring in the contact uh, first and last name. First name, I'll just, again, make my Contact name, I'll just bring in the full name, make it quicker. Oh, and I did want to show the ad. The address was actually, uh, let's see, composite address kind of worked pretty well, so let's do that. I'm going to ch uh, change that city. We'll just do the address one composite. Uh, this is contact one. So I will close out the property one. Nope. Close out the contact one. As you can see, it gets a little tricky when you've got all these things open, so I try to keep only one at a time open. So I've got my contact open. I'm going to close that up, and now I can open up my account one, and I can say um, address one composite. Insert that plain text control. So that's the one that on the screen gives you the gives you the address line one and the first line, city, state, zip, and the second, and, you, and it shows you the map. So hopefully we can see that pop up in this document. So I've done basically what I wanted to do here. I've created a property document, my custom entity, some fields from that, a one-to-many relationship table, and some stuff from the from the lookups. So basically that's everything you can do with this product. There is the many-to-many -many feature, very rarely used. I won't get into that, but same idea. All right, so we're now done. I'm going to save this document. Make sure I know where I saved it. I'm going to put it in the downloads folder and call it property profile. Okay, all right, so we're done with our word component. Now we can go back into CRM, and in our, that's where I was supposed to be, in our templates view, we can now say upload template. Just browse. I put it in the downloads folder because that is the default. Open up my property profile. Did I do that? Okay. I apologize. I don't seem to have the ability to open up that document. And that's blank now. Okay. Okay. Well, let's go back to one of the ones that are in, that are in there then. I apologize. I had to, like I said, I uploaded a lot of them already. 
So we do have some to play with. <laughs> the, the demo demons have struck. Someone, uh, someone writes and asks. Uh, uh, there's another question in here, uh, Dave, yeah. if you want to take that one from a few minutes ago. Um, for a field, can you enter just the last four characters of a field? For example, the last four of a credit card number field. No, there's no, no capability to do anything but drag the field in. You'd have to build that in CRM as a separate field that you did, did a business rule or something or some workflow to, to identify just those last four items then pull that field in instead. All right. Um, okay. Well, until, uh, so I can't upload that, so the only thing I can do is, is run those templates again. Um, all right, let's show the uh, the work. So basically, I showed you the pieces of it. Again, that upload template is working just fine yesterday. Uh, let me try to upload uh, a different one. Uh, do contact profile V1 version 5 or V2 here, just, just to see if it might be something to do with that custom entity. So that won't work. All right, pick this up. Yeah, see that? Look at that. Try that again. Why don't you want to add property profile? Interesting. Okay, must be something to do with not being a custom entity. That's the only thing different from from yesterday. I can't imagine why eyes of system admin can't upload a document, but okay. All right, sorry, have to move on, but that is the process. You do the stuff in Word, you upload the template, uh, and then it's automatically activated and available. Well, actually, you have to refresh the uh, refresh the CRM uh, window to make it available in that uh, entity. Um, but that actually is the the end of the document creation process. So now it would be just using it. So I'm going to go to the opportunities section, and um, we'll see if we can edit one of these and, and, and bring that in this time. So I've got uh, a bunch of opportunities here. And if I, if I, by the way, I just want to show you, if I select all this data, my Excel, um, I can go ahead and, and do Excel templates and e extract the doc, but you can see there's no Word uh, menu item here. So we can't do Word on many, we can't do that Word template on many, uh, many records unless we uh, go ahead and build that workflow, and again, that just pops it onto the email. So it's not, it's not a substitute for the direct mail or the other things you can do to send mail. But as you see, obviously, if I pick one, now my Word templates uh, item is back in my menu, and I can show you uh, a couple of things I was able to upload properly. And again, when you download it, it just creates a download doc. You just have to simply open, and this is an example out of the box of the information from the opportunity area. Um, not a whole lot there. I built, a, I built one that shows a little bit more. Go ahead and try that again. Word templates, opportunity summary V2. Again, it works really, really quickly. Open up the Word doc. And again, this is what I was going to show you about for my hints here. You notice I've got from opportunity customer accounts, from opportunity parent account. Because I wasn't 100% sure how the relationships were working out of the box, and so I wanted to bring back basically anything I could to show that information. So you can see I'm bringing back the lookup values here and some data from that those lookup fields. Uh, let me just show you this document uh, to show you what I'm talking about. So this is the document that I that I built, and you can see I've added you know the the tables and colors and all that stuff. But again, when I look at this. And I look at this, uh, so the opportunity is all these fields, and then I've got all my one-to-many's and many-to-one's down here. And you can see, so I wasn't sure, is it opportunity parent account or opportunity customer account that I wanted? Uh, so I put both of them on there so I could tell. So that, that to me, is, is one of the good ways of, as a system admin to kind of debug this and figure out what uh, these relate, which of these relationships you, you want to you pick to get the right information to come back. So I just picked them all. And put them on the put them on the tables here, and then you, you saw the result of which which uh, which records were bringing back the right data. I could then modify this and get rid of this table, for example, and give this better labels and things like that. Uh, and I'll just try that, see if I can upload this one. So I don't need this information, so I'll just cancel that, and I'll say opportunity customer contacts and opportunity user and parent account. Okay, and if I save this as a new version. 
opportunity summary V3. And that is one of the other uh, uh, kind of a, a bit of limitation. If you notice, um, I'll, I'll go back into CRM now. We'll try to upload this. Um, and, but if you notice on the template menu, there are no, there's no edit, uh, there's no way to edit the, to the template from CRM. You basically have to bring, uh, edit, keep it in Word. Or as you see, I've got opportunity summary V2 in here. I'm going to go now try to upload up to summary V3. See if we got lucky. Open. No. And it's bizarre. Okay. I have to now figure out why it was working yesterday and not today. My bad. Um, all right. So the other piece I wanted to show you was the workflow component. How do you set that up? So under settings, processes, I have this attached contact summary word doc to content workflow. Open that up, deactivate it. So I can show you how this works. Again, this is your basic basic uh, workflow process. Um, and then when you uh, when you um, uh, create your basically the conditions, so it's an active record. But then there's an action if you add step. Let's scroll this down a bit so you can see better. If you add a step and select perform action, it will give you an option of actions you can do, either set the process or set the word template. You pick the word template and you go ahead and set the properties and you just identify the word the word template you want to you want to create and the target. This is the record that this profile will attach to. So uh, basically I'm taking um, again uh, in here I'm taking the contact record from the contact. That's that's the contact GUID basically. So I'm going to attach this contact profile to the target. Notice I could also attach this contact profile to the company name. So I could conceivably have a contact profile for every person in the company stored under the company notes. But I did this as a contact one here and I'll show you the result of this. So that's basically how you set up the workflow. Of course I'd save and activate and I already ran this once today so I can show you that it exists on the contact form. So let me just go back to my sales uh, contacts and we'll pick Brene. And I can show you that in the notes section there's this contact profile document. Click on that to open it and here's the document be created. So we've got all of Renee's phone calls and tasks and information about her system from CR, her CRM record. Okay, I do apologize I wasn't able to show you the full uh, walkthrough, but again, the process is you go to Word, you, uh, you create your document. Oh, and that will be ahead of time. I will go show you what we need to do for the setup of uh, the initial setup. You have to get this developer menu to appear, so you have to go into File, Options, uh, quick access toolbar, actually add in, let's see, customized ribbon, sorry. And as you see down here, there is a developer. This developer box was not checked when I when I came in here first. Just had to come in here and check that box. Then the other thing is people have been reporting that uh, spell check has been causing problems. Um, so we typically go into that. Um, one second here. Spell check. I had to note where that was. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So when you're in the in the section, you want to go through and uncheck, uh, you know, the things that, that do uh, spell check in here. Right. Hmm. Okay. I have to read my own blog because in there is a very good instruction on how to set the spell, uh, is turn off the uh, 
uh, spell check, uh, auto correct. So th those are the two things you have to do. You have to get that developer menu on there. And then I found this XML mapping pane when I first did this, this little um, Microsoft CRM thing didn't appear. Um, but I, all I did was wait a few minutes and, and actually open up the document again and, and it showed up. So it's just a little troubleshooting for you. But again, you have to go through this one time, add that developer ma uh, pane to you, and then you use this XML mapping pane for each document to be able to see the fields that you've exported in that document template. Sounds like we have a, co a question hanging out there, Jason. No? Yeah, we do have a couple of questions. So, uh, yeah, a couple of other folks have noted that they've had um, uh, issues or errors um, trying to upload uh, .docx files that, 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 that with validation. Um, and they wanted to, people wanted to understand, um, are you saving Word templates as .docx uh, files yeah. all, all the time? Yeah, I have been. Okay. A <laughs> um, couple other questions here are, um, all documents created from the Word template attached to the entity. Yes. Yeah, you, when you pick that first entity, that's the entity it's going to store your document under, and that is the uh, and that is where you'll see it. So under the contacts, Word templates, you'll see contact profile V1. That's the, and if I go into the template area, You'll see that con uh, there's a uh, the only that's the only one for contacts. If I had uh, on the places I had opportunity, I had, I had three for opportunities. You'll see that those are all available under that opportunity record. There you go. All right. All right. And um, someone asks, why are we turning off spell check? Was that just for during development? Uh, during development. Well, so the reason is, uh, and this is uh, several people have reported this, when you're doing, when you're pulling in your uh, field names, if you have a spell check on, it might try to capitalize this first F to, F to full name. And capital F full name is not the same as small case full name. So things like that will cause you lots of grief. So, uh, and, and there's also been reports of word hanging um, when, uh, when spell check was active. So seems to be, the consensus seems to be best practices is to disable spell check. Now again, if you're, if you're a system admin, you're probably not doing a whole lot of Word document that needs spell check, but again, you can go, of course, turn that on and off again, you know, as you're, as you're working in Word. Uh, another question, could you take the execution of the workflow a little slower? I'm interested in using this to create documents on multiple records. Sure. Why don't we just go ahead and build and build a new action on this on this workflow then? Activate it again. All right, so I just had a simple condition here. I always put a condition on my workflows because if you don't, uh, you can't uh, you can't put a condition in later if you wanted to. But I'll go ahead and add another action. So this add step action, and then I'm going to have two choices: set process, set word template. And so we'll do something different. So this is uh, when a contact, uh, basically I, I made it, this, this runs when a contact city is changed and when we add a new one, we'll go and blast this template out there. But now I can go ahead and, and the entity, you don't select anything in the entity, you leave this as none, and then you hit set properties. And that's gonna ask you for the template. And let's just say I'll do accounts and contacts, and I'll put that target, uh, okay, and again, you see I've got contact company name here. These are all the lookup uh, values on the contact that I could use to attach this uh, a template to. So I'm going to pick company name. So this is kind of interesting. So on, this is a contact workflow that I'm now going to run and it will update the company record that's attached to this account with the accounts and contacts list, which is actually kind of a useful one because that accounts and contacts was the name and phone number information for all the contacts. So this would make sense to run. As we created a new one, we go ahead and update that list. So that's kind of a good use case. All right, so this looks. This is all you have to do. Pick the template and, and what record in CRM you want to attach that template of a document to. I'll hit save and close. And again, that's 
So I'm, so I'm basically doing that any time. So it doesn't matter if the contact status is active or not, right? So this is going to do it every time. I'm going to set that word template on the account. And let's just even give this a shot. Well, I know we're about done with our time, but I'll just try to run this one time, and maybe the demo gods will be smiling at us instead. So um, I'll go ahead and then uh, modify the city. As you noticed, I have the record fields here. I picked the address one city. I did. Uh, yeah, address one city as the field to change. So if I go ahead in the contact record, if I go ahead and select a contact like Renee. I can change our city. And hit done. It takes this as, of course, a asynchronous workflow, so it takes a second. And while that's working, I am going to go try to load that uh, template that I saved as a template instead of a document. See if that'll work. I'll say that. Hey, hey. What do you know? All right. Profile loaded. Excellent. So I'll go and complete that part of the demo and go to the sales customer properties extensions. Uh, let me show you this. Um, that when I click on this, it'll give me a word template dialog, and there's my property profile. And there's my property for Hillary's. Uh, we got we didn't have any we didn't create any phone calls, but we would show the many records here. There's the account address. As I mentioned, it gives you that um, that fully formatted thing. I actually played around with this, and you actually can, can format this box a little bit to make it look more like a, a mailing label. So it's really close to be able to create mailing labels. Um, but there's your there's your document that we created all the way through the system. So thank you, demo gods. I appreciate that. Uh, all right. What was the other thing we were looking at? We were looking at the workflow. So let's go see if on the workflow, let's see if Renee's record got stamped with a uh, document on the notes. Yep. There's the one we just did. Open up that contact profile. There's Renee's record. And again, the, the big check now that we made a modification to our workflow is to go find her company and check the notes section. And look at that, huh? the accounts and docs templates up there. And now I can see that I've got my list of contacts. So when I add a new one, I'll have a new list. I can keep having an up-to-date contact account profile automatically created and stored on this company record on, uh, under the notes for that company record right here. Of course, this is, now, this is not a SharePoint link. This is an embedded document. So you might want to think carefully about how many times you want to create this because this is going to keep uh, adding to your, to your space. And, uh, don't think there's a way in workload, at least not workload anyway, to delete the old one. But uh, that would be a, a nice uh, little uh, ability to have. Um, but okay, so I think I've shown everything. Uh, I've basically taken it from the top, create a new Word uh, document, upload that into CRM, and then be able to use that uh, against a, even a custom entity. Uh, showed you how we just do that. Uh, let's do the Excel piece one more time because that's so easy and good. Uh, showed you the Excel uh, ability to uh, use Excel templates as well as Word templates. Excel, the big difference is Excel templates can be used on a uh, on a set of data here. Um, and I didn't I didn't create any on accounts. Alrighty, well let's go to contacts. All right, I'm, I'm, I know I'm close. I'm at my time, so I should probably stop here and uh, and turn it over to you, Jason, for further questions and wrap up. Okay, great. Yeah, we have several more questions here, and uh, are you able to go to the top of the hour, Dave, or um, able to take a few more questions? Okay, great. So uh, I'm going to try to start working my way through uh, several more that have come in here. Um, uh, someone asked, I missed, how, I missed how you linked XML mappings on the Word file to CRM. How do you initialize that link for Word to be able to provide the list of optional mapping fields? Okay. Uh, great question. Let me go into my templates area and start a new one because that's how you, how you do it. So uh, as I mentioned, when we start a new, a new template, 
first thing we pick is what is the, our, our base account and a base entity. And again, we can pick anything. Um, in case, for example. Actually, I'll pick account. Uh, now I'll pick up a case. Uh, then if you say select entity, this is the key screen. The whole, this is the whole thing that everything's based on. You need to select all of the entities you want to pull into your Word document right now. You cannot redo this once you've, once you've done it. So if you've gone through and you've built out the Word document, it's got 16,000 fields on it. You want to add one more and it's not in the same entities you've been picking, you're going to have to start all over. Uh, so. Uh, again, very important. Again, uh, the understanding the one to many and many to one relationships and how that all works in CRM is absolutely vital to being able to properly use this feature, in my opinion. Uh, it's not hard to learn. Basically, one to many relationships are, are tables that you see, or subgrids and things that you see within your entity. End to one relationships are lookups. So if you wanted to go on your case form and you wanted to bring back something from the account, you would pick this entity. You would pick this link. If you wanted to bring back something from the contact, well, uh, there's a couple you can choose from. As I showed you, I would choose all of them first. It's easier to eliminate than you cannot add. So if you, and that, what I've also done is sorted by this entity name field. So I'm sure I'm picking up everything, all of the links from the contact entity, for example. So again, you can see is a primary contact, responsible contact, and then a customer contact. I'm not 100% sure which is which on my, on my case form. So I would start out by picking all of them. And again, you don't need to use all of them, but if you don't pick them all, you can't go back and pick another one later. So this is the place where you identify all of the relationships. And I'll just go ahead and continue this one further. Um, so we've got parent-child cases we can bring in, and I'll bring in um, phone calls again. All right, so you pick all of the entities you want to bring in and then hit download template. It opens up that doc. I said download template. Okay. I guess I should have screwed what I was ahead. But yes, that's the process. When you when you first start, you select all of the entities and all the relationships you need to build that document. All right, another question here. Once a document's created, where is it attached related to a contact? Uh, yeah, so, so okay, so first thing, if you're just creating, if you just, you just run this, uh, this option, okay, go back to a contact. If you just run the, uh, the report, attached to a contact, it's, it's not stored anywhere in CRM. This Word, this Word template creates a Word document that it downloads to your download area and you then open it up. So this is on my download area in, uh, in my download folder, okay? It, outside of CRM, it's in my, my personal computer. Uh, so that's why you have to upload it uh, to, to here to be able to use it in the system. Now we talked about the workflow, the workflow deposits that document as an attachment to a note, and it just creates a new note and attaches a doc. Hopefully that answered the question. All right. Um, let's see. So regarding attachments, um, if, if you generate a letter based on a contact, for example, would that letter um, – okay, I'm sorry, we've already covered this. They're automatically attached to the contact record. Um, all right, next question, does it um, – so we seem to keep hitting the same question. Um, <clears throat> do I need to have admin rights in CRM Online uh, to be able to see the different options under uh, templates inside of settings? Yes. Uh, uh, you can have uh, – your, your, your system admin can grant you that permission, but you need the permission to see this document templates area. By default, users do not. However, I didn't really even go through it, but let I me mean, do it real quick. As a person, once my admin has created uh, a, well, at least one template for me, I'm a user now. I can go in here and create a Word template as a user. Okay. So, and that's and then that would be there would be a third list here when you when you when you select this. They would I can't really do it because I'm an admin, but there's a there would be another section called personal templates and yours would show up underneath that. that. So these word templates under the word templates are the corporate ones. Your personal ones can show up underneath that. And you can create a new one by clicking on that button. Anything else? Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, so assume you ha want to run an invoice every month. How would you do a workflow for that and send that out as an email? Uh, I would probably not use the word template feature. I would probably just create an, uh, an email template because those can be mailed out in bulk, selecting, you know, you select everybody on a, on a, on a view, select the email templates, and that will send out to everybody on the view. This is, this is a one-off Word document creation tool. It is not to replace uh, the mail merge uh, uh, email template uh, email template functionality. And if you noticed in the settings here, we've got a bunch of different templates now, or different template types here. We've got email templates, right? The, the, these are the ones you would send out via email, you build and send out via email. Okay, and there's a bunch of them, you know, case auto response, for example, that are that are out there as, as a default, and then. You still have mail merge templates that you would still use to, to send out uh, a Word doc to multiple people. I fully expect that they'll replace the mail merge process with this process in the later release, but currently it is basically designed for one-off document creation. All right. All right. I'm just going through the questions that are still remaining. Um, Is there a, a way to batch download uh, documents that have been created in the last week, for example? Uh, I don't believe so. I have, I have not run across that capability. Uh, because they would all be attached as notes, that's uh, embedded inside that note object. I, uh, you probably came with the SDK. You can probably extract that stuff, but there's nothing I, I know of within uh, out of the box CRM itself to be able to extract a, uh, a bunch of documents that you've created and attached. Uh, what is the difference between using Excel templates and export to Excel? Um, not a whole lot. Uh, ex export to Excel gives you some more options as far as do you want to create a pivot table or do you want to create uh, data from all records on the, on this page or, you know, that kind of thing. When you have the 250 limit, you can do, you know, just the 250 or do all of them. Uh, the Excel uh, template just brings on all the records in the view and that's it. You're done. You pick, a, you pick the entity, the view, and you get all the records in that view. So it's quite easy and fast to do that Excel, Excel piece again. I'll just do that while I'm waiting for your next question. I create one. Okay. So contacts, my active contacts, any of the views I want, and download file. There you go. Can't get much simpler than that. All right. Um, if a uh so if a new attribute is added to an entity, would you be able to add that to, into an existing report? Uh, and that's for a Word document rather than uh, yeah. rather than a report. Not yet, well, not a report, a Word document. That's a great question. I honestly do not know. I, I, I don't believe so, but I, uh, because that XML, it's all about the XML, and that XML list is created when you create that document. So, so that's why basically the uh, current best practices until we figure out how to edit, the, until Microsoft allows us to edit, is to keep all these documents stored in your, you know, folder location so you can get back to them. I, I've been storing them on the, uh, on the downloads because that's where it comes, but you can see all of mine that I've been working with the last few days are all in here, and that's what I would end up doing is just, uh, just keeping that it's in the library somewhere. Um, so like, you know, V3 or whatever. So uh, you can copy and paste some things. So. Uh, it is conceivable that you could create a new document and then copy and paste everything in. I would double check all of my repeating uh, tables to make sure that XML attribute got copied. Uh, but it is conceivable to go ahead and do that. Um, but yeah, that's a great question. I think that's something we should add as an enhancement because I don't think that's possible right now. Great question. Though. I, uh, want find out. Limit I want to find out for sure on that answer, and I'll, I'll add that to the article on the blog because that's, that's an excellent question. All right, great. And uh, what's the limit of records that be, can be queried in Excel? 
Uh, I have not found any. I mean, there's 100,000 something rows or a million rows in Excel, so I have not found a limitation yet. All right, uh, and this is our, um, our final question. How much space do the templates take up in CRM Online, or better yet, how can I limit the amount of space to use by templates? Great question again. Um, you know, it's going to vary on the on the doc contents of the document. You know, these are you know in the in the small KB range, so it's not that not that huge. And these are the templates and the one and, and the ones I cr I created. For, uh, you know, the documents I created from that, so they're not huge. Um, you know, it, it, every every document you you upload, every time you run that workflow that creates a document that attaches it into a note, that's going to take up you know I don't know 20, 30 KBs of storage. Should be fairly should be fairly small, but of course you do this every day, a few thousand times a day, it'll start to add up. But um, uh, again, that's the only place that that workflow goes now. And of course, you know all this capability. If you have a .NET developer, you could probably uh, you know do much more of this. Create a SharePoint folder, stick things in there, that kind of thing. Uh, but for now, out of the box, it attaches it as a note attachment. All right, um, I guess one follow-up. Have you tried querying above 50,000 records? Um, Fetch XML has an upper limit by default, for example. Yeah, that, 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 that would be it then. Yeah, I, I, I try not to bring 50,000 records into Excel ever. So I think, that's a, I think it's a fine limit myself. But yes, I understand you may want to bring back everything in the world and pivot table and all that stuff. So I guess what I'd say is if you're having problems with, with a number of rows from Excel, I would probably try to create a pivot table uh, using that export feature instead, uh, because that will, well, you still probably have all that data coming back. Um, a couple of different exports, I guess I would try. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't change any, any standard out-of-the-box CRM limits as far or change how, how storage is done or anything. It just stores them as node attachments. All right, well, that's the end of our questions. Um, should we start wrapping up? Great. Let's do it. Let me uh, hit the stop sharing button. And um, we'll quickly go through these. Tony, do you want to take over from here? Yeah, I got it. Thank you, Dave. Um, so just real quick, these are um, – so other than just helping, um, if anyone needs help with setting up or working with these uh, mail merge templates, uh, that's something that we could actually do pretty pretty easily with anybody that's been on this call remotely. Uh, this is also a list of the other services that we provide for those um, that may need some additional help with dynamic CRM. So given time, I'm not going to walk through all of these, but you know, typical um, implementation um, and uh, modification types of services. Dave, go to the next one. Mm -hmm. Click. There we go. Okay, and once again, this is all of our contact information, so you'll have access to download all of these slides, and if there's anything we can help you with, um, let us know. Thank you so much for attending. Right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Thank you, Tony, for presenting to us today. And, uh, and thanks to everyone in the audience for all the great questions and your attention today. Really appreciate it. Um, please look for a survey on your way out. It'll pop up, and we really appreciate the feedback our presenters always do as well. A couple folks asked. We have recorded today's session, and uh, uh, we'll send you an update on the progress of making that available. Uh, so with that, we are going to wrap up. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day. Okay, thank you.